This video is long overdue, I know. <laughs> Here are the results. My grandma's ancestry DNA results. The same day that I read my results, I read hers. And it was so interesting and pretty cool to compare the similarities and the differences. To compare what countries my DNA matched in and what countries her DNA matched in. So I could see like, oh, so I got that side from your side of the family. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna insert these clips of my grandma just so you can see how she looks. No. <laughs> All right. Here are the results. So, 41% of her DNA matched in Benin, Togo. That's exactly what I got. I'm going to put my percentage of Benin Togo right on the screen so we can compare it like that. Um, I do remember I had a high percentage match for that country as well, but another country was higher and it seems like some of her DNA is also from that country, but a lot lower. So the next one is Cameroon, Congo, and the Southern Bantu peoples. I specifically remembered 45% of my DNA match there. 22% um, is like less than half, so I guess I didn't get a lot of that from her. Um, but she does have it, 22%. The next highest is actually, and you know, this actually surprised me because mine was so low. Ivory Coast, Ghana. She is 13% Ghanaian. <laughs> but you know what? I only have like 2%, but this makes me feel better because that means even further down my lineage, my ancestors' DNA <laughs> results would match much higher um, for Ghana. Then Mali, 7%. I only, I believe... Molly for me was only 2%. I'm actually 3%. I'm always underestimating myself. Get it? Underestimating? <laughs> 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 and those are the only high-ish percentage for the African countries because then it goes into Europe. So, Germanic Europe. I specifically remember that I also had Germanic Europe. Because I'm like, why do they call it Germanic Europe? Why can't they just say Germany? Um, I guess there's a reason for that. So, that's 5%. She is 5% German. <laughs> I don't think my percentage was that high. I don't even remember. Or was it? Um, let's put a side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> I did get it, I did get that part from her, I guess. So for Portugal, 4%. These are pretty, like even though these are like one digit number percents, it's still a percent. Um, I see people that have like negative, have like less than 0% different countries. 3% Norway. Um, I don't remember if I got Norway or not. If I did, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> 3% Norway, 1% France. It's interesting. Um, France is such a low number.
And then she also got Native American North Central South 1%. I also got 1%. So a part of me definitely is Native American. She literally has one, two, three, four, five, five countries from which her DNA matches 1% with. I thought that was pretty bizarre. 1% Senegal. 1% Senegalese. I think I also got 1% Senegalese. So clearly now I'm overestimating myself. Um, and it's funny because I got 0% Senegalese, but a lot of people say I look like I'm from Senegal. A different country that I didn't get, Bosque, Basque, Basque. I think it's pronounced as Basque. Basque is actually like a part of France and Spain. So it's like Spain, France, and I guess the name of the country is Bosque, but I don't know. Like, I didn't think there was a country in between Spain and France, but they say Basque. Let me just Google this right now. So I've learned that Basque is actually a country that spans the Spanish and French border. And there is also a language called Basque that is spoken by only a small percentage, I think somewhere near 27% of people in the Basque country. Basque is also a language isolate, meaning that it has no known connection to any other language, which I thought was fascinating to learn. You learn something new every day. Last but not least, the Philippines. Wow. 1% of her DNA is also from the Philippines. And in my head, I was just thinking, like I was talking about this, like with my family like we always joked she looks a little Asian because of her eyes they're so small and they're a little slanted so we're just like where is that coming from I've never seen like a picture of my great-grandfather so from what I've been told some of my family members say that my grandmother's father was Dominican while others say he was Haitian but he did have very light skin and wavy hair like my grandmother's his last name was Rube, spelled R-U-B-E-S. And a lot of her DNA matches, they say like her fourth cousins and other people she has matched with, have a lot of like Latino last names. A lot of people with the last name Espinal. I saw Ramos, I saw Lopez. And I compared my DNA matches to her DNA matches. And most of the people we found were people with Latino last names. So, of course, there are Haitians who have light skin and wavy hair that aren't necessarily from Dominican descent or Latino descent. But with these DNA matches, it is clear that her father did have some type of Dominican ancestry in his family. But, yeah, um... These results are really interesting. It says her migrations are African Caribbeans, Lesser Antilles, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, African Caribbeans. That makes sense, Hispaniola. That's Haiti and Dominican Republic. And But it also has Spaniards, Cubans, Dominicans, and Venezuelans. And that's why Venezuela kept popping up on my ancestry DNA migration route because I'm just like Venezuela why does Venezuela keep popping up and that's not the case for everybody who's Haitian or everybody who is black or has African in their DNA but yeah so also 1750 it has Venezuela Dominican Republic and Cuba, a large, large percentage of Cuba, and also a large, large percentages of Spain, a little bit of France, and a little bit of Portugal. That's what comes up on the map in 1750 for her migrations. Oh, on the border of Guyana a little bit. Seems like they weren't in Haiti in 1750. And then it says the same thing for 1775. And then it shows that we, and then it shows that they went to, what? Is that 
Western Sahara, Morocco. I don't know what country that is. So they migrated from Spain to the Canary Islands, which is conquered by Spain. So yeah, so it wasn't until the 1800s, Haiti starts booming. And this is kind of, wow, Virgin Islands. It just takes up the entire Virgin Islands. <laughs> wow. And yeah, definitely Jamaica. In 1850, they went from Spain to Puerto Rico. Ew, okay, yeah. 1900s, oh my god, so much is going on here. There's like barely any more blue dots in Spain. So they left Spain and they just started going all over, all this crisscrossy. <gasps> What's that? Oh my god. It's just so interesting that like the DNA is just so real. You can see that it goes to New York. There's people in Connecticut, Philadelphia, ooh, Atlantic City, okay, New Jersey. <laughs> so it says, from Barbados and Panama. I also had Panama and Barbados. They went to New York. How interesting. And then Jamaica is just like all over the place. So for my grandma, it stops at 1925. <laughs> different but a lot of it is the same just wanted to show you guys the countries where I have matches in and she doesn't but yeah that's my grandma I would I would recommend for people to do family member who's lived longer just to you know compare DNA and just to see like how much of your DNA you get from your grandparents. Maybe in the future I'll have more of my family members take this DNA test so that I can keep gathering more information. Thank you for those who didn't skip through the videos just to see the results, but thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it and just leave any comments or questions down below. And if any of you are like my third, fourth cousin, let me know, please. <laughs> Bye guys, see you in my next video.